Hello Year 7, it's Mr Thompson here. This is work for all of you. Um, as I explained and show my homework, we're going to spend each week just going through one of the topics you've done this year. So going all the way back to energy, I'm going to play you this slideshow, I'm going to t um, talk you through it, and then you're going to do a few more tasks. So you're going to watch and listen to this video, which is me talking about energy, so hopefully it'll bring back memories of when we did it um, last year. Um, you'll then watch another short YouTube video, one which I think you watched back in about December, to remind you, just about three minutes. And then I'm going to show you how to sign into Seneca Learning, and if you haven't done it before, it's a fantastic resource, and it allows you to complete assignments and me to check your progress and how much time and effort and how well you do on your learning. So here we go. If we just start with my video at number one, you may remember these slides. So to do anything, we need energy. Energy might heat something up, it might move something, it might make a noise, or it might light something. Energy makes things happen. I'm going to talk about energy transfers now. It relies on the law of conservation of energy. Energy can't be created, it can't be destroyed, but it can be transferred from one form to another. So some examples then, like a kettle. A kettle is a transducer. Transducer changes one form of energy to another. So a kettle, you can draw it like a little flow diagram, changes the electrical energy that comes in from the plug and changes the heat energy store to heat up the water. So the electrical store is called the input and the energy coming out of the heat is called the output. And it makes D. I'm going to talk about conservation of energy and give you three examples. So quick reminder, energy can't be created, destroyed, but can be transferred. So in a light bulb, you put electrical energy in, you get light and heat out. Electrical is the energy you put in, the input, and light and heat is the output. And the exact amount of energy is turned into light and heat. You don't lose any. Second example is the radio. You put electrical energy in, if it's plugged in or it's in a battery, electrical energy goes in, electrical energy store is turned into sound energy store because it gives the sound, and it will heat up a little bit. And those two energies together will add up to how much electrical energy you put in, so you don't lose any energy. Last one we did, you might remember playing with these little toys in class, is a little wind-up toy. To make it move, you have to give it some energy. So you have to wind it up, and it's an elastic energy store. Then when you release it, all of that energy will turn into kinetic energy, a bit of sound, and a little bit of heat too. Okay, a bit more tricky. There is a calculation needed if you're going to work out the efficiency of something. Ideally, everything would be 100% efficient mean that 100% of what you put in would be out as useful energy. But you do transfer energy into unuseful things. For example, a TV. If you put 200 joules of energy, joules is a measure of energy, into a TV, you must get 200 joules out. So if you get 800 joules, 80 joules of light out, that's brilliant because that's what you want, and you get 40 joules of sound, that's fantastic. But the missing energy would be the heat energy, which would add up to 80 joules, and that would be wasted. And to work out how much is wasted, you do this sum here. So quickly, the light and the heat, the light and the sound together is 120. Divide that by the 200 that you put in, and that would come out as 0.6 or 60% efficient. This was a tricky bit for you lot who can who can do it. Maybe this will help you. Okay, that was task one. Just a reminder of what energy transfers is all about. Your second task is to watch another short YouTube video. And it's on my Learn Physics video channel. And I've created a playlist, and the playlist is for year seven. So this video belongs there. The video I want you to watch belongs there. And from next week and the week onwards, I'll put all my videos on there, which is helpful. If you ever miss anything or you want to recap, you can find the videos on there. You don't have to look back through show my homework or any emails or anything like that. You'll be able to find them on there. So in that playlist and also the hyperlink in show my homework is this video here, brilliant video and um, by few school, three minutes, just over three minutes long, energy and electrical appliances. So if you'd watch that now, please, or you, and then you're going to move on to Seneca learning. So having watched my video and the YouTube video I've just suggested, we're on the final task, which is Seneca Learning. A little bit of an introduction. You will see in the Show My Homework assignment I sent you, you have a link to join into that. If you've already joined in, you'll know what it is. I'm not sure whether the teachers have showed you it, so I'll just give you a quick tutorial. 
When you join in, you must join in with the link I've sent you, so it'll sign you into the right class, and you have been assigned as an assignment on energy. I'm showing this screenshot on the left here because on the left you'll see the energy, forces of motion, waves, and electricity. The first four are the four topics that we've done. So we'll be going through these one a week for the next four weeks. So please get used to it. If you get stuck, um, try and work it out for yourself. And if not, then you can contact myself. On the right hand side, you'll see a screen, uh, the first screenshot for units of energy, just so you can see what it looks like. You read the information and then it asks you for questions. It asks you questions. If you get it right, you score well. If you don't, you don't get the score. But you can repeat it and improve your score. So I'd like you to do that. If you get things wrong, I'd like you to try it again to try and get maximum score. The report on Seneca Learning will tell me how long you spent on it. It will tell me what you scored. It will show me the whole class mark book. And this is the way that I'm going to assess you over the next four weeks. So please take some time doing it during the lesson time. Shouldn't take more than that and try and get as high a score as you can by reading all the information. Okay, that's it for this week. Next week, we'll be doing another one of the topics in a similar format. Um, please send me your feedback through Show My Homework or send me an email. Not through chat on Teams. I haven't set up Teams yet. I will be thinking about that next week and how I can start chatting to you live from next week. Thank you and goodbye.